What's up everybody, this is Graham here. Today we're gonna to talk about shoulders, specifically how to assess your overall mobility and health, how to improve your mobility and how to strengthen to keep that mobility for life. If you haven't seen the video we did on scapula, I highly recommend you go ahead and look at that because that forms a foundation for the shoulder. Not only is the, jo the scapular bone part of the joint, but it also controls a lot of the stability and the posture aspect. A key thing to talk about before we get to anything going on with the shoulders, you have to make sure you can lock the rib cage down. The scapula and the shoulders both move Move off of the rib cage. For example, if I say raise your arm overhead, arm would go straight overhead, but now if I brace the core, my arm is not very much overhead. So this versus this is a very big difference. Understand that bracing the core is the first step to having a healthy shoulder. When you look at the shoulder, it's what is known as a ball and socket joint, which means that there's a lot of mobility, but not a lot of stability overall. What you wanna visualize is a golf ball on a tee, and that's basically the scope because the shoulder can move a tremendous distance, but there's not a lot of connective surface area between that and the rest of the torso. There's three bones that make up the joint. You have your humerus, which is your arm, your clavicle, which is the collarbone, and you have your scapula, so that shoulder blade in the back. They come together to form a joint where the rotator cuff muscles, your supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and teres minor hold on to that. Obviously, you've got your biceps, your pecs, and your lats that also engage, but those four small rotator cuff muscles are what provide most of the intrinsic stability. We're going to go over some of the different tests you can do to look at the overall health of your shoulder. So first, you have flexion and extension. Flexion is simply taking your arm straight up overhead, making sure the ribs are locked down, and seeing how far you should be able to get directly over your head with that arm fully extended. Extension is the opposite, where the hands go behind the body. You want to be able to get that to at least 70 degrees. Next, we have our adduction, so the ability to cross the body, but you can also do a straight arm across and at least clear the shoulder. That's a horizontal, and then you have a little bit of a angled, so you can reach down to your hip. So the across and down, that's the adduction, and then you have abduction taking it away. And so the lateral abduction is being able to take the arm all the way up and all the way down without any pain. The next motion, internal and external rotation. Horizontal, internal and external rotation. The elbow is gonna go up to the side. You'll bring the hand up to a field goal and then you'll bring it back down. You wanna be able to at least get to that 90 degrees of motion going back on the external rotation and then work at least 60 to 70 degrees on the internal rotation. A simple test to be able to test both of those, the horizontal and medial internal external rotation on both arms is to see if you can grab your hands behind your back. So take your hand first, put it in your low back and see if you get your palm there. Then take your thumb, put it between your shoulder blades. And if that's fine, then take your back of your hand and put it between your shoulder blades as high as you can. And another way to look is if you can take your hand in the low back and then lift it off without that front shoulder caving forward, you've got good internal rotation extension on that shoulder. The other side is how well you can reach the hand over and grab. The real value of this test is it can tell you asymmetries. If one side is more limited, typically means you have a more dominant side. If you did a lot of throwing and overhead work, you're gonna have that tension guarding on that dominant side. Once you get a good idea of how well you're moving, next it's time to see how much we can clear up with that. So because the shoulder is inherently mobile in and of itself, we generally don't have to do as much. The shoulder basically relies on those four rotator cuff muscles. In general, bad mobility means that you have over-reliance on your pecs, your biceps, and your traps to do the movement for you. So you might notice that overall hunched position. If you take a finger and press into your chest or your upper traps or your biceps, there's gonna be a lot of tension there. The real work is gonna be to work on the opposing muscles to get space for your shoulder to work smoothly. So with that, you're going to be doing as much pulling as you can, all right? So literally face pulls, overhead pulls, rows, body weight rows, pull-ups, scapular pull-ups, any type of band pull-aparts. The reverse plank is another fantastic option because it does put you in that shoulder extension. And so I got a video, you'll see if you raise your hips up. If you have trouble holding that, you can go to a passive stretch where you walk the hips away and the arms are straight. Just focus on keeping the fingers pointed away from you and then opening that chest up so the shoulders turn around and keeping the triceps engaged. Once you have that space, you take a band, start light to make sure you're getting the quality. You can do simple lateral or medial external rotations, just keeping the elbow pinned to the side, going back and forth, and then resisting coming back in. You can do, they're called Cuban presses, but it's really that horizontal external rotation, elbows up bringing the hand up and just focus on keeping the ribs down and then not letting the shoulder come out of place. You wanna keep that packed. All of those things are good. And the thing they have in common is that they are a light load, light intensity to really focus on the movement. If you feel it in your neck, your upper traps, your pecs, your biceps, you've done too much. Next, we wanna look at what are we actually doing to strengthen that. So do a little test for me. If you hold your hand and make a fist, you'll feel the muscles in your wrists and fingers and hands engage. 
squeeze a little bit harder, you're going to feel your biceps and your triceps engage. Now take a second to squeeze as hard as you possibly can. You may feel it through your pack, your upper shoulder, your back, your glutes, your core. The more you grip, the more you inherently develop and activate the muscles of the rotator cuff. Take a kettlebell or a dumbbell, hold it upside down so it's really hard to hold and you really have to grip it. That is an excellent way to develop strength in the shoulder. Doing overhead presses, you'll be amazed when you feel this stuff working your scapula and your mid and lower traps to stabilize. Face pulls, you can't go wrong with these. There's different ways you can do it. And you go to the chest, to your face, overhead. Just focus on the main things, keeping the ribs down, keeping the quality high. A little pro tip is to pull the band apart. Shoulder taps are another one you can do body weight. You're holding a plank and just take an arm one at a time. You're creating an unstable position that you have to stabilize. Hanging is a fantastic exercise you wanna look at as well. The arms are being pulled either up or down or out of the socket and so reflexively, the rotator cuff muscles have to engage to hold on to that. Obviously, if you have any type of historical dislocation, subluxations or AC joint sprains, it may not be pretty suitable for you to jump straight into an overhead hold right away. And just in the same way, it may not be suitable for you to do an overhead handstand press but build up to that. Last one, and it's one of my favorites, is the L-sit overhead press. You can do it with a barbell, a dumbbell, kettlebells, and do unstable grip, it doesn't matter. The real magic here is that you're in that L-sit position, which forces you to sit up tall, which forces you to use your hip flexors, which forces you to keep your core engaged, which forces you to use your upper back and scapula to actually stabilize. Work through those exercises to strengthen after you've understood how to break your core, after you've assessed your shoulders, and then after you've spent enough time to develop a better connection with your shoulder blade muscles. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe, like the video, add any comments, anything I missed out. And if you have any questions on how to apply this, go to my website. I will walk with you through this. This is something I'm really passionate about because I have dislocated my shoulder 11 times because I didn't know what I was doing and how to train, and I just trusted that physical therapy would do it for me. You gotta do it yourself and learn how to feel it, all right? And if you're on the beginning of that journey, frozen shoulder, shoulder pain, dislocation, subluxations, I'll walk with you, all right? Take care, have a great day, bye.